Many of us are used to taking a data set and randomly splitting it into train, def, and test. It turns out when your data set is small, having balanced train, def, and test sets can significantly improve your machine learning development process. Let's take a look. Let's use our manufacturing visual inspection example. Say your training set has 100 images, so pretty small data set, and with 30 positive examples, so 30 defective phones and 70 non-defective. If you were to use a train def test split of 60% of the data in the training set, 20% in the def or holdout validation set, and 20% in the test set, say, then if you were to use a random split, just by chance, it's not inconceivable that you may end up with 21 positive examples in train, 2 in dev, and 7 in test. This would be quite likely just by random chance. And this means the training set is 35% positive, not that far from 30% positive in the overall data set, but your dev set is 10% positive and your test set is 35% positive. So 2 out of 20 is 10%, 7 out of 20 is 35%. And this makes your dev set quite non-representative because in your dev set, you have only two or 10% positive examples rather than 30% positive examples. But when your data set is small, then all of your 20 dev set examples, there's just a higher chance of this slightly less representative split. So what we would really want is for the training set to have exactly 18 positive examples, dev set to have exactly six positive examples, and the test set to have exactly six positive examples. And this would be 30%, 30%, 30%. And if you could get this type of split, this would be called a balanced split, where each of your train, def, and test has exactly 30% positive examples. And this makes your data sets more representative of the true data distribution. There's no need to worry about this effect when you have a large data set. If you have a very large data set, a random split will very likely be representative, meaning that the percentage of positive examples will be quite close to your overall data set. But when you have a small data set with just 20 dev set examples and 20 test set examples, then explicitly making sure you have a balanced split can make your dev set and test set more reliable measures of your learning algorithm's performance. This is one of those little techniques that turns out to make a big difference to your performance when you're working on a small data problem but that you don't really need to worry about if you have a very large data set. So when you have a smaller data set, I hope you consider using a balanced train dev test split as well in terms of how you set up your data set. So when you're working on a smaller data problem, I hope that using a balanced train dev test split will help you with your learning algorithm. And so that's it. Congratulations on getting to this point in this course. You've finished the data section of videos, and in the last two weeks, you also learned about modeling and deployment. There's just one last optional section that you can watch if you want on scoping. I hope you come with me to watch the optional scoping videos as well, where we talk about how to select a project to work on. But either way, congrats on finishing all the required videos of this course. I hope you've learned a lot and that these ideas will be useful for all the machine learning projects.